Serbia's president has been meeting with ambassadors of several countries to discuss escalating tensions in northern Kosovo. Police have been deployed outside the city hall in Zivshan for a second day. Ethnic Serbs have been protesting against the election of ethnic Albanian mayors and blocking them from entering their offices. They don't recognize Kosovo's independence and they boycotted the municipal elections last month. Well, let's go to Bernard Smith now, who's in Belgrade for us. Uh, what did the Serbian president have to say at the meeting? Rob, he, Alexander Vucic has been meeting ambassadors from the US, the United Kingdom, France, Italy, Germany and the EU's representative here in Belgrade. And he's been telling that he's accusing the international community of tolerating unilateral moves taken by the government in Pristina, Pristina the government in Kosovo. And he says that as a result, there is a decreasing number of options that could lead to permanent peace and stability in the region. And Vucic says he went on to ask the ambassadors to ask Albin Kurti, that's the Prime Minister in Kosovo, to withdraw his forces and mayors. As he says, the Serbs there will never accept what he calls uh, the occupation of that area of Kosovo, Rob. Uh, Bernard, what were the reactions from the ambassadors? So we've heard only so far from the European Union, the European Union's foreign policy representative, uh, foreign policy chief, excuse me, Joseph Borrell. He said that the clashes that have been happening in Kosovo, in the northern part of Kosovo, have been absolutely unacceptable, he said. And he's urged the leaders of Kosovo and Serbia to, to immediately de-escalate the tensions. And he's warned that the EU is discussing possible measures to be taken if the parties continue to resist proposed steps towards de-escalation. There are frequent outbreaks of violence in Kosovo, um, confrontations between the ethnic Serbs, the majority in northern Kosovo, uh, don't accept the unilateral declaration made by Kosovo in 2008. They've never accepted it, and there's been these outbreaks of violence since then, though what we've just had in these last few days is probably the most serious outbreak there's been since Kosovo declared its independence. Rob. Bernard, thank you very much indeed. That's Bernard Smith talking to us from Belgrade. We're going to bring in Danny Ilatsi. He's the head of the research at the Kosovar Centre for Security Studies. He's joining us now from Pristina. Thank you very much indeed for being with us. As Bernard was saying there, um, Serbian President Aleksandar Vucic urging Kosovo to withdraw the ethnic Albanian mayors. Is Kosovo going to listen, do you think? Well, the situation is very uh, tense in the north. It's not the first time uh, a similar kind of situation was also in December. Uh, important is that now we have NATO troops that have moved in uh, and they are uh, uh, providing, I think, a much needed, uh, uh, um, in a way, space. Uh, however, yesterday we saw also violent clashes between NATO troops and the protesters and we, we saw a number of uh, soldiers from the NATO uh, wounded as well as uh, civilians. It's very important that, uh, in a way, conditions in the north uh, we have some end of violence and there is conditions for the Serbian community in the north to return to institutions uh, that they uh, left uh, in protests last year. Uh, it's very important that the process that we have with the EU facilitation in Brussels, the dialogue for normalization of relations, becomes the platform where uh, both Kosovo government and Serbian government engage to, to resolve the, the current situation there. But what is very important to stress is that Right now, the status quo is not sustainable, uh, uh, and we really need a sustainable solution to the North and not just uh, uh, in, improvised solutions. And there is a plan in place. Uh, the recent agreement signed by, or, or not signed uh, technically, but agreed by President Bush and Prime Minister Kurti, so-called agreement on the path to normalization of relations between Kosovo and Serbia, and the EU needs to deliver a sequenced action plan on how to implement this agreement, uh, because in a larger context, an EU that cannot effectively deal uh, with this kind of situation in its own, uh, in a way, uh, front yard, then uh, it doesn't give much confidence in the EU as an effective actor to deal with other crises, uh, both within Europe and, and, and elsewhere. So it's very fundamental that the EU takes uh, 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 charge and, and, and prevents further, further escalation. If we've seen the, the level of violence that we have seen yesterday, as you were talking about, against the NATO troops, how likely is it that people are actually prepared to listen to EU when the tensions are clearly so high? 
So far, we haven't had positive reactions to uh, from either side. Uh, it's very concerning that uh, uh, there, there were reports yesterday of uh, armed uh, groups uh, in the north, uh, the ones who also were primarily responsible for attacking, I think, the, the NATO troops. Um, the process of or the dialogue for normalization of relations between Kosovo and Serbia started in 2011, uh, and the process has had some uh, success, important success. In 2013, uh, we saw a process of integration of the Serbian community in the north to the Kosovo institutions. Uh, we had uh, um, integration in the security institutions, in judiciary and so forth. However, the recent developments have uh, backtracked this progress. Uh, and this has to do not just with the elections and the mayors. Uh, of course, the government of Kosovo, uh, uh, from the technical and legal perspective, uh, has the right to uh, install the mayors. However, there, you cannot detach the reality in the ground in the north, which is that it is a predominantly Serbian uh, populated area. And these mayors that were elected, some with fewer than 200 votes, are not seen as legitimate. And any effort to impose those mayors there uh, uh, would, I think, provoke further violence. So I hope that we, we see uh, uh, that leaders uh, meet and, and resolve these issues, uh, this uh, uh, current issue in the framework of the Brussels dialogue. Uh, but we need more sustainable solution. And for more sustainable solution, we need uh, uh, Serbia, uh, especially, I think, President Vucic in this case, to uh, appeal for calm and, and mm -hmm. to invite, uh, uh, to, to send the right messages so that there is a path through which the Serbs living in Let the Let me North ask you Kosovo. about what happens, uh, given the circumstances that we're seeing at the moment, that, are the, yeah. that nobody seems to be listening to, to anything that is being said by anybody. And we are seeing NATO forces which are being targeted in, in, in this violence. Yeah. If, that, if nothing changes and this, car this carries on, how far could it escalate? Well, I think... Uh, I, I think the violence, as we saw yesterday, can uh, um, it's a reality that will probably, you know, it's not unthinkable that it will continue. However, following the events from yesterday, there seems to be a more caution approach from uh, both leaders, uh, uh, and it, it is perhaps uh, we won't see that. However, uh, it is. It is essential uh, 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 that the EU makes it clear that there are consequences if the situation continues. And from what I hear is that the EU is meeting today to discuss exactly what these kind of consequences might be for both Kosovo and Serbia if the violence in the north uh, continues and, uh, and there is no return to dialogue. Uh, and we need stronger leadership, I think, also from the U.S. This has also always worked in our region when we had a unified approach from U.S. and the EU. And right now we have seen very strong statements coming also from the United States uh, against what happened uh, in the north of Kosovo. Uh, it is clear, uh, I think, that what the government in Kosovo perhaps wants uh, is uh, to have a more sustainable path towards resolution of the overall situation in the north of Kosovo, mm. because it's been over, uh, you know, over two decades of a reality in the north of a country that is, uh, you know, uh, not in, uh, integrated with the rest of the country. Mm. There needs to be a more sustainable solution. Daniel, and let's say we appreciate you being with us yeah. in Al Jazeera. So thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank you. Thank you.